Howdy y'all, my name is Price and welcome back to some more Monster Puram! We're playing again! So, last time I told y'all that we were going to try and check out the um, different items that we've unlocked and so we're going to be doing it again. I'm always playing as Oz. Why? Because I like Oz. Oz is my dude. He's the best. Alright. Um, <clears throat> so, early on, once again, we're going for money, money, money. And uh, that's uh, what's going to help us. So, the invisible hand of the free market. Thank you. All right, and then school is outdated and lame. We need a new school subject ASAP. Critical thought. I mean, damn, this uh, country could really use a subject like that in class. How to correctly punch a crocodile without terrible consequences. Turning people into your puppets through emotional warfare and deception 101. That one. Charming. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. What would be a deal breaker for a potential lover? Um, versus boring, coward, lacks manners, lacks taste, is mediocre, hates the outdoors. Um, mediocre. I figured. I'm going for Vera because I feel like Vera has, from my experience, has the most money-related outcomes and really it's only going to matter for like the first couple of interactions let's go to the library let's make some monies then you spend some time in library pcs playing some good old online poker gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision but who cares it's time it paid off so fuck it you gain plus two money all right you see miranda and vera chatting away their eyes gleaming the gleam of the scheming crowd surfs isn't doing nearly as well as i thought it would oh if it isn't oz would you like to be a customer once upon a time surfs were only for the rich and fabulous like vera and myself but now, thanks to our app, CrowdSurf's you, too, can have your very own crowdfunded surf. The app is being generously funded by my royal family, who wish for everyone to experience the joys of royalty and get richer off of it. I think our business might be failing because the surfs are simply not of high enough quality to maintain customer interest. The surfs need to have more enthusiasm for their jobs. We need to get, uh, recruit from the right locations. Don't be absurd if there's one thing being royalty has taught me. And there's definitely more than one. It's that you can trick anyone into doing anything, as long as you give them the right incentives. But why not start with the easily manipulated in the first place? Oz, what do you think? All right, let's think. I'm going to take a sip of something while I'm, while I'm looking over these. Sorry, I've been recording Monster Prom for a little bit here. My voice is killing me. All right. <clears throat> Vera's right. Why not recruit people who want to be bossed around at a Leather Daddy convention? Oh, my. Miranda has a point. Everyone wants to win. Host an unpaid labor competition where the prize is doing more unpaid labor. Hmm. I have no idea what either of these are for stats. This one might be bold. Um, or fun. What about this one? So creative. Ooh, what a delightful idea. It's true that for those who are not born to fame, gaining it or watching others gain it is a favorite pastime. I'll have my press agent advertise it as the hottest competition since Monstropolis' is next top terror. And so, who wants to be an unpaid laborer is born. People compete their hardest at various demeaning tasks, and the winner gets to continue to perform for them as a serf. There you are, my most loyal of subject. It seems everyone is caught up in surf mania. Several new spin-offs have been ordered, including Unpaid Labor with Stars and The Real Surfs of Monstropolis. Magazine covers are now featuring the 100 hottest surfs. We have a waiting list the size of Miranda's ego. That's the Kraken calling the octopus tentacle, but whatever. Our business is making me even richer and more notable than I was before. And it's all thanks to you. You may be a peasant, Oz, but in my eyes, you're a slightly less filthy peasant. You never thought you'd hear Miranda say such kind things. She must really like you. Miranda and Vera give you a cut of their success, earning you plus two money, and with it, plus one charm. Nice! So I only need to do one more money thing, and then we can buy um, whatever we need. The, the angel tears or whatever they were. So, there's no way I'm getting money at this juncture, or at least not unless I get the coven one where you can get the money. You were planning to sip it yourself today, but the only table you can find is partly taken by the coven. You do feel kind of sorry for them. After all, no one ever seems to want to sit with them. Oh, good, it's you. We can practice one of our spells on you. And this is probably why. Oh, don't look so worried. We're preparing for an upcoming battle with the disgruntled Lord of the Seventh Circle. And if we don't do our homework, we'll have a hell of a time beating him. The audience laughs. Wait audience anyway we've got two spells we've been meaning to try out magical enhancements to help us beat the big bad do you think we could try one on you oh, pretty pretty please oh says the audience you know the magical enhancement doesn't sound half bad you could choose either of the two options 
The spell that lets you see the future and also the past and the present. And you can watch live TV anywhere. Or, nah, you want to go for something a little bit different. Let's do the spell that turns you into two helicopters. Well, we did two attack helicopters last time. We know that gives you creativity. This one I know gives me smarts. I'll just go ahead and go for the smarts for now. Let's do it. Because we did the other one last time. The choice is made. Broadbandium maximum. Suddenly, you can see everything. Everything. You can see how the world will end. You can see how the world began. You can see your parents having sex, even though you totally don't want to. What's more, you can watch every single episode of Where Weasel, Weasel Detective, at once. Hello? Are you still alive? Lunch is ending. We're going to study for the test next period. You probably should, too. Who needs to study? You literally know everything already. You gain plus four smarts and an entirely different perspective on your parents. Yikes. All right, well, we're still going to have to go to the library to get some money. As long as Valerie's not there. She's not good. Okay, let's get some money. That day, you spent some time on the library's PC, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who is really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares? And you gain plus two money. All right, we've got enough money. Good. You notice Vera showing off an elaborate new necklace to Miranda. They're the crown jewels of Lemuria. My family acquired them in a cutthroat business merger. Do you like them? Oh, yes, very much. Such a shame about the Lemurian royal family, though. What? That they're all dead at the hands of their own servants? No, no. That was unavoidable once the true tragedy had taken place. They were no longer loved by their subjects. Feared, you mean. Oh, no. Fear is so scary. Love is what matters. I could not disagree more. You there, settle this dispute for us. What is the best way to let people know how powerful you are? Buy their houses, burn them down, then replace them with a water park. Boldness? You don't need to convince anyone. Just make everyone who doesn't love you disappear. Ooh. Okay, hold on. This one might be money, then. Um... Because this also sounds bold. They both sound bold. I'm gonna go for the top one. Not so fun. Dang it! Water? Parks? Do you mean to say that you land dwellers have been stealing massive quantities of our sovereign water? Merely for your amusement? This explains why my uncle, the Archduke, was recently assassinated by the Ambassador of SeaWorld. Shame on you, water thief. Off with your head! You make a hasty escape before Miranda can summon your guards. You lose two smarts and one fun. Ouch! That's fine, though. We still got our money, and that's all I care about right now. Oh, boy, y'all. That was a tricky one. That was a very tricky one. All right, let's go talk to Valerie. Let's face it. You're probably going to end up losing your money in some stupid way anyway. Why not spend it here first? It's called just being smart. Okay, so where is it? We want this thing. The angel something. Blood of an angel. The message here is that you don't mess with me, even if you're a literal angel, babe. All right, let's see what this does. Bye, stranger. Because it's got to be a secret person, right? Or some kind of really cool secret ending. It's an event, right? Okay. It's blood, too, so maybe I should go for, like, um, stuff with Liam. So, like, um, creativity and smarts. Um, speaking of which, though, let's go talk to these guys. You puff yourself up, hoping to look as big and tough and sporty as possible as you take your seat next to the Wolfpack. Hey, you! You know what it means that you took a seat at the Wolfpack's table? Well, it probably means that you don't care that much about defining which love interest you're pursuing. And or the table's already taken. It means you're now one of us! One of us! One of us! One of us! Don't get us wrong. The second lunch is over, we 100% go back to hating you because you're weak and not at our level, bruh. But for now, you might as well enjoy living your best werewolf life to the max. Sometimes we like to stick with just classic... Oh, okay, sorry, that was me. Sometimes we like to stick with just classic, blanketly hating all other monsters, but other days, we like to be aggressively inclusive. And you caught us on an aggressively inclusive day. Yeah, bro. So, what classic werewolf activity would you like to do in these brief glorious moments in which you get to be part of the T-E-A-M-E? -E? Hmm, correcting their spelling of team probably isn't a classic werewolf activity. Better go with something more like Howling at the Moon or Practicing Ikebana, the ancient Japanese art of floral arrangements. Just super wolfy. Let's do this one. This one's Charm. I've done that one before. Let's do this one. I've never seen this. Hell yeah! It's like you're in our minds already! Thank you for seeing that being part of the wolf pack is more than just playing sports, hitting the gym, and being total douche bros. Don't get us wrong, those are still the three central pillars of wolf pack life. We're also just super into Ikebana. You and the wolf pack slam dunk the rest of your respective lunches into the trash can and head outside to do some serious fucking flower picking and subsequent arranging. Bro, bro, look at this arrangement. Missing an azalea with a dahlia is dope. Whoa, dude. Daisies and daffodils? Extreme. Yeah, don't forget, putting your tie at 70 degrees, bro. Don't be an Ikebana noob. Man, you guys with these sick bouquets, we're going to be drowning in pansies and peonies and pussy. Yeah. Well, leave it to the wolf pack to somehow turn floral arrangements into crude sexual remarks. 
But hey, your flowers look bomb.com and you gain plus four creativity. I'm down with that. All right. All right, so looking over our stats. Oh, well, I can't do any more creativity. Let's get some more smarts. I'm, th I'm thinking blood might have something to do with Liam. That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. You're proudly displaying your new angel blood when suddenly a few of your classmates, specifically three of them, specifically the coven, <gasps> Oh, this is for the coven! Appear literally from thin air, because they're witches, and that's how they roll. You, Oz, you found it! You found the angel's blood. We need that to save the world! The literal, actual devil, Satan himself, is planning a hostile takeover of this particular school for some reason, and the only thing that can stop him is the blood of an angel that isn't fallen. We thought you would have a vested interest in helping us, since we know that Satan himself killed your parents. Um, no. He absolutely did not, but the coven seems pretty insistent, and before you can correct them... You, Oz, you found it! You found the angel's blood. We need that to party down. We're gonna split the angel's blood 50-50. I'm gonna smoke it with some high-quality crack, and I'm gonna feed it to my snakes to keep them luxurious, silky, and easy to style. Okay, but we wanted to save the world, and if there's no world, none of that would even... Let's put it to a vote. And you count as one person because you're literally inseparable and somehow your faces are always weirdly in sync. Hey, that's offensive. Not all which is the same. You would think you'd recognize my uniqueness by the fact that I'm the only girl at the school without a thigh gap. Sure, but like we never know which one of you is talking. You all sort of talk at the same time. So it's two against one. Fear and I win the angel's blood. Yay! I can hear my snake scoping it down already. On the one hand, you're happy. Your friends are happy. On the other hand, the role will end if the coven doesn't get that blood. Ah, fuck. Why does the Coven always ruin everything by asking you to make difficult choices? Plus, pissing Polly and Veer off is kind of equally likely to end the world. Time to convince them to happily give up that blood. Listen, Vera, Angel's blood is pretty rare. Maybe we can bargain with the Coven and make this into a sweet business opportunity. Or, don't you see, Polly? The most powerful drug of all is the friends we made along the way. Um, it's gotta be this one. So smart. I do like unique business ventures. Listen, Coven, if I give you my angel's blood, it's yours, but sure, why not? Do you agree to give me Satan himself's corpse after you've killed him? Oh, good call, Vera. What? Why? I think I can make a very stylish headpiece out of his horns. And then I could replicate that and begin a new fashion line. I'd call it devilishly delicious. Loving it. And I can grind up his hooves and snort that. Our... Are Satan himself's hooves a drug? Fuck if I know, but I imagine they'd have to have a spicy kick to him, right? I mean, you gotta assume as much. I feel like his tail would make a great belt. Ooh, and his eyeballs could be earrings. Yes, unique fashion empire. And great drug trap. Here we come. They're so excited that they run off before the coven even agrees. Wild. Thank you for that, Oz. Now give us the angel's blood. You do, because you like the world and don't want it to end. It's so nice to interact with someone at the school who actually cares whether or not the planet is taken over by the literal, actual devil. You would think that wouldn't be such a rarity, and yet, we appreciate your help, and we will call on you again before this adventure is through. Maybe now you'll finally get to avenge your parents' death by stopping Satan himself once and for all. This is literally not a thing, and you have no idea where they got it from. But you're way too tired to argue. The point is, you did a good job. The gals are happy, the coven is happy, and you're happy, with your plus two charm and your plus one fun. Nice. Plus, if you really stop and think about it, the coven does save your lives a lot. And that girl in the middle, Joy, right? Has some rocking curves. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. I didn't know. I didn't know that this was how you date the coven, but this is how you date the coven for sure. All right. We've done our first interaction. I'm going to write some notes like I did last time. So that was um, coven. And the first one we said was business venture. And so it was smart versus something else. Um, or just to say question mark. Maybe fun, question mark? I don't know. But we picked smart and we won. And the first thing, and that was the smart option was, uh, what, what was that like? It was like um, business venture. Business idea was smart. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, what stats do we want to build up? We're going to do it just like we did last time with Blobbert, where I'm just going to try and keep all my stats kind of um, 
hovering around the same area because I don't think your actual stats matter. I think you just need high stats and you need to be able to win the different interactions. Um, so boldness. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hang out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits and gain two boldness. But I, I'm going to tell you guys for real. I didn't even read that off the screen. I just said it from memory. That's how much I know it. You turn to find Miranda staring at the walls and sighing audibly. She clearly has something on her mind. Oh, these bathrooms are so vulgar. If only they were more like the bathrooms back home in Atlantis. Bathrooms so vast and luxurious, many have entered and never been seen again. I have raised this issue with Principal Giant Spider, but he insists that the school does not have the budget for such things. He told me to pick one improvement, just one, for the school to implement. But what improvement of all the myriad possibilities should I select? Oh, I am paralyzed by the options. Help me! Flood the entire bathroom with seawater and exotic fish, just like home. I even have some underwater interior designs. Look! Or a gold-plated robot that helps you wipe. We're going with the top one. I, I, I want to say this one's either boldness or money. So this one probably. Dang! Oh, but of course, the most elementary improvement of all, submersion. What would the gold-plated robot be? Creativity, maybe? Within hours, a team of contractors have arrived to break up the entrances to the bathrooms, drill a hole in the roof, and dump in a bunch of salt water. But it's not long before you find Miranda looking even more distraught than before. The toilets. The toilets were not built for underwater use. Geysers have filled from the floor to the ceiling. I'm not sure how much longer it will even. Just then, a huge sploosh echoes through the halls of Spooky High as the newly flooded bathrooms collapse in a shower of salt water and monster shit. The mixture causes a gnarled, slippery tree to grow where the bathrooms were. It has eyes and teeth, and it hates you specifically. You lose minus two charm and minus one creativity. Dang! That sucks. Okay, well, that's fine, because that was just a Miranda interaction. It wasn't a real interaction that matters with the coven. Okay. So, we're going to continue to go for stat boost at lunch. You find the Slayer sitting alone at a table. Is she even a student or what? Wait, you're choosing to sit with me? For some reason, no one ever intentionally sits next to me. I usually have to ambush them and threaten to kill them. I wonder why. It's a mystery. Anyway, I'm really happy you... I mean, I'm flattered that... I am I mean, I actually... um Wouldn't give a shit about you under normal circumstances. But today, I'm on a quest. Yeah, that's right. I'm not emotionally vulnerable. I'm just on a quest to slay the werewolf of Wall Street. And I need a monster sidekick. You're gonna help me, obviously. I just need to know what your class is. Are you a fighter? A mage? A cleric? Out with it. Oh, you're something much better. You're a... Party Smith. So this one's fun or boldness. Let's go for fun. A party Smith? How is being able to craft a wicked party from nothing going to help me slay the werewolf of Wall Street? Oh well, I already committed to bringing you along. I suppose you can uh, be my scrappy comic relief. Clearly the Slayer is uninitiated in the mysteries of the party Smith. You set out to prove her wrong. By organizing a party so baller that only a fool would miss it, you manage to lure the werewolf of Wall Street out in the open. But what he doesn't know is that the guest list for your party included basically just a fuck ton of knives and wolves fame. The wolf dies how he lived, high as balls on cocaine. All right. Well, that was probably a fluke, but I'll hit you up if we do a sequel or a spinoff. And uh, let me know if you want to sit with me at lunch again. You probably won't, but who knows? The world is a crazy place. For your top-notch party smithing, you gain plus four fun. Awesome. All right. If we get another coven interaction, I got to be ready for this. But we probably won't until the next one, maybe? I'm, I'm always confused as how they work. Anyway, let's get some more charm. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirits, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain plus two charm. You're sitting around wishing you had bought an item you actually uh, got to keep instead of one that was, you know, snatched from you, when suddenly... Oz! There you are! The time has come for us where the protagonists of this quest have reached a stumbling point where we simply can't get through this alone and must rely on a secondary character to come in and help us out. Now's your chance to step up to the plate, become the star of this particular arc, and help us avenge your parents' death by defeating Satan himself. Literally, where did they get this from? As you once again consider dispelling this rumor, you are once again stopped, this time by the appearance of... Dimitri! Give us back that angel's blood! It's not too late to redeem your soul! Dimitri runs his sexy fingers, attached to his perfectly sculpted arm, through his jet black, carefully tussled long hair, which hangs low over his glistening, gleaming, glinting eyes. I'm a vampire, Dimitri says broodingly, yet somehow alluringly. I have no soul. None of this matters to me, don't you see? In thousands of years of existence, nothing has ever mattered to me. And that is what makes me powerful. You can never defeat me, because you care too much. I care for nothing, so I can do anything. 
As if to prove this point, Dimitri lights his shirt on fire and lets it burn off of him until his rock-hard abs are revealed to the world. See? I have nothing to live for, but I also have nothing to lose. You will never, ever be as powerful as I am. Give up now. He's right. We do care too much. We'll never defeat him. There's no point. We should stop our quest now. You can't let them stop. Not now when you're about to have your big plot moment. Time to step up and become a fan favorite minor character that people will draw tons of fan art of. Seduce Dimitri into being your opponent slash ally who might seem to fall back in league with the enemy at times, but always proves himself to be on your side in the end. Or the Coven's ability to care isn't their weakness. It's their strength. Prove this to them with a well-crafted montage of flashbacks uh, to times they protected each other. I'm going to guess that the second one is creative and that the top one is charming. So let's go for the top one. Seduce Dimitri. Oh, I'm so charming. Hey, Dimitri, you want to come to prom with all of us? I'm going to write this one down too, y'all. Hold on. Give me a second. All right. So um, Dimitri seduce. And that one was charming. And we won with that one. Yes. Versus we're going to say maybe it was creative. Who knows? Question mark. Okay, cool. You tussle your own hair. It's sultry, but also sweet and a little sexy and a little naive. Your, your eyes, Dimitri stammers. The look I see in them, I've never seen anything like it. You're so innocent and pure. It makes me want to protect you. I've never seen such genuine kindness in another eyes before. You're also very hot and I want to bang you. There are a lot of different feelings going on here. In all of these thousands and thousands of years, I have somehow literally never met another monster in the world who has been able to even come close to thawing the ice around my uncaring heart. Yet you have melted it with but a glance. You have saved my soul. Didn't he just say that he didn't have a soul? Whatever, you're not going to argue with him. You, Oz, Dimitri says, kneeling before you, are my angel. And as such, deserve this angel's blood. He hands it to you. And now I must go prove myself worthy of you by redeeming myself through a series of heartbreaking tasks that may or may not result in my death before we can ever be reunited again. Please, never love anyone else. With that, he's gone. Wow, Oz, who knew your sultry looks were so powerful? Now we can use that angel's blood to defeat the literal actual devil Satan himself and finally put your parents' souls to rest. Sure, right. Good news is you totally got plus three boldness for just going for it with a sexy vampire dude. Too bad he's way too old and brooding to take it to prom. That being said, it would be nice to think outside of your usual friend group for prom dates. For example, Joy really does care a lot about other people and saving the world. So that's a nice quality in a prom date. Maybe? Hey! All right, it's going well so far. It's going well so far, y'all. I'm excited, but also terrified that I'm going to screw up the last one. Let's go for fun. Looking at my stats, we're going for fun. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point, there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rap party. You gain plus two fun. You're gazing dreamily at Miranda when a flash of otherworldly light blinds you. When your vision clears, you see a great rift is open in time and space, and standing in the middle of it is, we all know who this is. It's me, the prince of the other world, and I am here to fulfill an ancient prophecy. A prophecy? How exciting and regal. What sort of prophecy is it? It is a prophecy of love. Oh boy, here it comes. Legends foretell a great beauty with the hair of an angel and the scales of a fish, a beauty who I am destined to marry. But that... That sounds like a perfect description of me. Could it be that I am the great beauty described in the prophecy? Well, yes. That's sort of what I was trying to imply. Now come with me to my realm where we may plan a magnificent wedding. You can't let him get away with this. But that prophecy is hard to argue with. The only argument you can think of is the hair of an angel. Ha! Clearly Miranda has the hair of a goddess. Or what about these fish scales I glued to this handful of angel hair pasta? Okay, that's creative. That's charming, right? So charming. It's true. The very hair you now look upon was stolen and crafted from the scalp of Thetis herself. Daddy really does insist on the best hair for all of his children, even if it angers the gods. Ah, well, um, perhaps the prophecy was speaking metaphorically. And yet, technicalities are the very things these sort of prophecies turn upon. 
No, alas, would that I could find a princess with less perfect hair. The prince flees through his portal to go trolling for more princesses as Miranda glows with pride. You gain two smarts and plus one charm. And the phone number of her hairstylist. Nice, is it Damien? All right, give me one second, y'all. Oh, goodness. I'll be right back. I'm, I'm on the other side of the room right now. I can't choose what I'm doing. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm coming back. All right. Okay, we're going to um, we're gonna go see the hunter again. For sure, the hunter. Hello. You're eating your lunch, minding your own business, when someone under your table pokes your business. Ouch. Psst. Hey, how would you like to turn against your friends in exchange for forbidden knowledge? Betraying your friends sounds bad, but forbidden knowledge sounds dope. You listen to her pitch. Basically, I just need you to tell me Damien and Liam's hidden weaknesses for, like, totally innocent reasons. And in exchange, I'll teach you one of my most secret slayer techniques. What's that you say? You'll totally do it, and I can trust what you say 100%? Great! Which technique do you want to learn? Hmm. How to be the protagonist of any scene. So that's probably charm. How to punch a dude so hard his head explodes. That's going to be boldness. We're going to go with charm. I think charming is working out well for me. How to be the protagonist of any scene. Yeah. You tell the slayer that Liam's weakness is being ignored, and Damien's weakness is an ice cream cake. Really? But that's so simple. I'll bury them in indifference and frozen treats, respectively. Oh, you want to know my secret technique? It's simple. Just act like you're entitled to everyone's love and affection and constantly make decisions that endanger you and your friends. Whoa, that's it? But you already do those things, like, all the time. Is it possible that you've been the protagonist all along? This discovery gives you a newfound confidence, which you use to punch the slayer in the neck and steal her shoes. As a protagonist of your own life, you gain plus four charm. Nice. Alrighty. What's next? Um, so our charm is at 15, which is awesome. Let's get our fun up to 12, so it'll match our smarts. I feel like that's good. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. At one point, Juan, the small magical Latino cat, slips on a banana peel. You start to laugh at him. He asks you to stop, but you don't. You laugh so hard at him that you somehow steal plus two fun from him. Hooray! Aw, poor Juan. Oh, is this him? Look, this is his outline. Well, on the small magical Latino cat. Miranda's not paying any attention at all to what's going on at the rave. She gazes out the window and sighs dreamily. <gasps> ah, summer's almost here. Underwater skiing, ocean polo, brutally suppressing food riots, and the public square. I can hardly wait. But I do feel dreadfully sorry for those who are not fabulously wealthy enough to enjoy the same summer pastimes I do. It's so sad. Wait, you're a poor, aren't you? What do you do during summer? Do you play in garbage or or starve recreationally? Truly, what are your plans? Why, madame, I am insulted by your assumption. My family, too, possesses many fine estates. You haven't heard of them because they're in the sky. Or, yep, playing garbage. Come with me, you'll love it. We're gonna go with this one because I feel like that's money. Dang it. You take Miranda, who is understandably hesitant about this terrible idea, to your favorite garbage heap of all. A miles wide island of plastic products floating in the midst of the Pacific Ocean. Great Kraken's fangs, it's enormous. Is this all you're doing? Sure, what the hell. You're not above claiming credit for an environmental catastrophe if it'll get you laid. This is a gross violation of mer sovereignty. My family owns the surface rights for the entire Pacific Ocean. Who gave you permission to gather all these corroded baby dolls and use condoms in this gigantic whirlpool? Go be poor and disgusting on land, interloper. The sea is strictly for the disgustingly wealthy. Miranda dives into the ocean, leaving you to discover that half of the discarded toys in the island have gained sentience and hate you. You lose two charm and one fun, <gasps> and a whole lot of dignity. Ooh. I guess the top one was charming, maybe? Well, that's why I was like, milady, I'll take you to the sky, or whatever. Like, I thought it was money, because it was like estates and things. Anyway, uh, so we lost some fun, we lost some charm, but we're still okay. If I get boldness, it'll match my fun. If I get creativity, it'll match my fun. Let's get creativity. Because I often screw that one up. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves had decided to give you a figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It'll be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. You catch Miranda posing in front of a mirror, gazing dreamily at her reflection. Oh, how I would love to win the talent show. Of course, Daddy pays a dozen peasants to tell me how talented I am every morning, but that's not the same. After all, they're peasants. Not to hold, no, uh, to hold that heavy, spiky trophy in my hands, or rather, to have my servants hold it. Oh, that would make me the happiest princess in all the land. But I'm so nervous. What if they don't like my song? What if my skin is too scaly? What if I accidentally say a swear? Okay, Miranda, be calm. Remember what Daddy says. If you don't calm down, failure is 100% assured. That's not helping. Now I'm even less calm. 
Looks like Miranda's caught in a vicious cycle. Quick, help her out before she worries herself to death. Don't worry about those chumps in the audience. If they don't love you, then they're untalented at recognizing talent. Or, I know a great trick for beating stage fright. Just picture everyone naked. We're gonna go with this one. I think it's charming. Yes. Oh my, what a marvelously kind thing to say. You are right, of course. How silly of me to doubt it. It is as Daddy says. Us aristocrats are simply better than other people. You are quite perceptive for a commoner. And you know, if I don't do well on the talent show, I suppose that's all right. Daddy can always have the judges executed for their impudence. You're glad you're not judging the talent show this year. You gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. Nice. I'm cool with that. All right, we're almost there, y'all. We're getting close. We're getting close. Man, these long runs, they take, well, they take a long time. I guess that's the point. You're hoping to enjoy your meal in peace, but Coach seems to have a different idea. What's this? Eating regular food again? Fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, blood. These are all parts of a complete lunch, sure. But you're forgetting the most important food group of all. Dietary supplements. Don't you worry now. Old Coach never goes anywhere without some emergency vitamins. Here, take your pick. It would be rude to turn him down. And who knows? Maybe you'll gain some benefit after all. Coach holds out two pill bottles. Palomino Gold 25 Horse Supplement. So this one we know. This one gives me um, Charm. A completely black bottle emblazed with a Chinese character for party time. This will give me some fun, it sounds like. I think I want more Charm, strangely enough. Let's just go with it. You swallow the entire bottle of Horse Supplements because it's no use committing to a bad decision halfway. Suddenly, you feel your hair growing silkier, even though you're not sure you had hair to begin with. Something seems different about you. For some reason, I want to stroke your mane and feed you sugar lumps. It's probably because of how healthy you are. From all the vitamins. It's like I always say, when life gives you vitamins, take them, no matter what the label on the bottle says. You're inclined to agree. Also, some sugar lumps do sound good. Your classmates all gather around you to comment on what a pretty pony you are. Everyone loves a horse, or a high school student slowly turning into one. You gain plus four charm. I wonder if I'm like a centaur Oz. A centaurs. Yeah. Okay, let's build up our boldness. That day, you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. While in the bathroom, you tell yourself in the mirror that you're so bold you would kill a tiny, big-eyed turtle with your bare hands. That monstrous actor would instantly give you plus 500 boldness, but come on, you're just talking to yourself in the mirror? What's the merit in that? You know what? Screw it. You can keep plus your boldness anyway for saying that to yourself out loud. Many people go to the bathroom to fulfill a very basic biological need, euphemized, in fact, as going to the bathroom. But when you go, you're immediately greeted by the hullabaloo that can only come from the clamoring of many armored merpeople. This goddamn school. Hear, hear. My judgment is final. The sentence is death, to be carried out immediately by my most trusted executioner, Extrop. Miranda is sitting on what should, again, euphemistically, be called a porcelain throne, but which has been turned into a quite literal throne, adorned with gold and jewels and dolphin skulls. In what was the next stall before all the walls were knocked down, a bare-chested masked executioner holds the prisoner aloft. It's a goldfish in a plastic bag, but they're about to flush down the toilet. Rolled, cries the goldfish. Yes? Any last words? Or glubs? I demand the trial by combat, cries the goldfish. Oh, shoot. I hate when they do that. I'm really obligated to really oblige. Very well, then. Choose your champion. The goldfish swishes his little fishy tail, and suddenly, an enormous fish man with huge rippling muscles, somehow, even though he also still has scales. It's all very confusing, but anyway, he appears, and he wields an enormous battle axe. Agramaquatus, the terrible, horrible, full of bloodlust, never been defeated again? Oh, my prisoners are so predictable. Hmm, I could have you fight him, Extrop, but I'd hate to lose my best executioner. There's shark-headed Max the Axe, or Madrigal the Murderess, or... Or Whale Dicked Whalen the Wanderer. But of course, there's only one champion worthy to fight the undefeated Agsrel Maquatus, the terrible, horrible, full of bloodlust, never been defeated. And that's Oz, the nightmare from the surface breather of air. Don't worry, Oz. Just because Agsrel Maquatus, the terrible, has killed literally every single champion he has ever come up against doesn't mean he's going to kill you. God damn it. They can't even piss without the threat of being ripped limb from limb by a fish. Better find a way to turn this around so you can survive and, more importantly, impress Miranda. Point out to Ags Merloquatis, the terrible, horrible, full of bloodlust, never been defeated, that you are all above water so he can't breathe. Or, the Goldberg said trial by combat. He didn't say what kind. Challenge to do combat you in the popular video game of battling pocket humans. Pokemans. I think that this one is smart and this one's creative, but I have no idea. Hey! You bring yourself up to your full height, which is still nowhere near close to being as tall as Ags Merloquatis, the terrible, horrible, full of bloodlust, never been defeated and approach him menacingly. 
if we're above water. Oh, no, this is me. This is me. <clears throat> if we're above water, you whisper in his ear flap, and you have gills, which you do, then how are you breathing? As more his eyes go giant, and they were already pretty big. He gasps for air and clutches at his throat. His gills flap frantically, but there's no water to filter through them. Oh, look, it would appear your champion has been defeated, you tax evading scum. Now prepare to meet your maker. Wait, what? Tax evasion? Any last words? You may be able to flush me down the toilet, says the goldfish bravely, but you'll never be able to take away the likelihood that I can live in the sewers and mutate into something far greater than I am now and return to fight Oz, the nightmare from the surface, breather of air, my own self. A risk I am most certainly willing to take. After all, Oz just proved themselves to be the greatest, bravest, beautifulest champion ever. With that, the traitorous, tax-evading goldfish is flushed down the toilet, but who gives a fuck about that? Because Miranda is obviously smitten with you. And all because you remembered how air works. You gain plus two boldness and plus one charm. Nice. Who boy, y'all. Agsmal Maquatis. Agsral Maquatis. Agsral Maquatis. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, all right. Let's get some creativity to match it up with our boldness. Yeah. Yeah. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point into discussion. So you decide to convey it through music. You start singing and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain plus two creativity. Miranda's sitting on her throne. She had her servants bring it in here, of course. She looks quite worried. You ask what's up. Do you think this play is fabulous? Because it decidedly is not. On my father's charts of royal fabulousness, it would rank just below the village pig humping festival. It must be more fabulous. Tis my duty as a princess to make it so. But the sheer barbarity has paralyzed my mind. What to do? Alter the script so that it is about your kingdom. It might be vulgar, but it will inspire and educate the peasants. Or take the leading role. Nothing could make it more fabulous than your royal presence. That's got to be charming, right? Yep. Oh, I couldn't possibly. But it's so nice of you. You know what? Just for you, I'll do it. So what if I can't memorize lines or play a role? I'll just call daddy. He'll teach the director what to do. You hope teach the director what to do doesn't mean torture the director to death? It probably does, though. Anyway, you get plus two smarts and plus one charm. Nice. Okay, we've got one more lunch and then our final interaction, which I'm hoping is with the coven. Let's go talk to the hunter. You're taking a break from socializing to eat your lunch when someone punches you in the knee. It's the slayer, and she's hiding under your table. Eat knee pain, freak. Now I'm going to punch your other... Ow! You just threw your apple at her. Finally, a use for that red delicious. You defeated the slayer. She flees, leaving two choice pieces of loot behind. The loot flashes rapidly, getting ready to disappear. Almost as if you're in some kind of video game. No time to contemplate the nature of existence. Pick some loot before it's all gone. Garlic, rice, and holy water. One monster's weakness is another monster's dinner. Or a gun that shoots stakes with each shit burning to the side of them. I'm going to go with garlic, rice, and holy water. I don't remember what this one does, um, but I know that this other one does boldness, and I'm not particularly interested in boldness right now. Hey, waste not, want not, right? You hijack one of the burners in the kitchen and cook up a batch of garlic rice with holy aioli. The other students are super excited to eat something besides Mephistopheles' bland cafeteria cuisine. The head chef herself tries to stop you, but you convince her to try some of your rice instead. The holy water kills her instantly. Until the school can fill her position, you gotta be the chef. You put drugs in everybody's food and don't really remember the next few days. A good cook can turn even the simplest ingredients into a days long bender, and you're the best. You gain plus four fun. Nice. I had a feeling that would be that. Okay. Where are we at stat wise? My creativity is only at 13. I think I want to get it up to 15 to match my fun. Let's try that. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you're struck by the lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate nickname for yourself. You tell everyone to call you by it, also known as one of the seven most douchebaggish moves in the world. But the nickname's so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that people decide to go with it. Quite the feat. You gain plus two creativity. We, the devs, dare you to actually come up with a nickname for yourself and ask the other players to call you by that name until the end of this run. All right, y'all need to call me... Uh, sweet, sultry shadow boy. You're doing jumping jacks to prepare for the final battle. You're not sure when it'll be, but it's late enough in the season. You know, spring, fall, winter. That you know it has to be soon. When suddenly the coven bursts in, quickly followed by some kind of demon. Not Damien, though. That would be way easier to handle. Oz, thank goodness you're here. 
an actual literal devil, not the actual literal devil, Satan himself, but another actual literal devil, his demon lieutenant, was sent after us by the literal actual devil, Satan himself. I guess he got wind of our amazing plan and decided to end things before they started. We can't use this angel's blood on him, because then we won't be able to defeat the literal actual devil, Satan himself, when the time comes to it. And we'll never avenge your parents. How? Why? Quick, Oz, think of a plan to defeat him. One, throw hot sauce in his eyes and run away. Two, start stripping to distract him. Bull JK, not time for that yet, because an actual literal devil, but not Satan himself, throws a lightning bolt, which pierces the middle witch directly in the heart. <gasps> she drops like a stone. Joy! No! The other two witches scream. Joy! She's dead, cries the witch on the right. Fate, faith, so something like that, maybe. You should really learn the names of your classmates other than just Joy. Especially because Joy probably wouldn't be into you if she knew you didn't know her best friend's names. Although she's dead at the moment, so... Joy can't be dead, sobs the other witch. Grumpy or sleepy or someone. If Joy is dead, there will be no diversity at all in female body types at this school. And Liam and Scott are built so differently. It isn't fair, wails fatalism or whatever. They do have a point. You better revive Joy for the sake of representation, if not for the sake of saving the entire world. Also, you've grown really attached to her over those misadventures. Sob over Joy's corpse, so she revives. Or, selflessly use that magic orb of healing plus four you've been saving this whole time. Sob over her corpse, so she revives. I think that's charming. I want to say that's charming. I'm hoping this is charming. Oh, yes! You drop dramatically to your knees. No! You scream, shaking your fist at the sky. Joy! Why? Take me. Take me instead. You cry to the universe at large. Oh, joy. Oh, sweet, sweet joy. You cradle her limp body in your arms and weep beautifully over it. I'm doing my best CW um, voice right now. Delicate tears stream down your cheeks and gently land on Joy's face. Then, a very sentimental song starts playing magically in the background and Joy's skin turns pink. JK, she just wakes up. What? Where am I? What happened? Joy, you're back. Look, they're separate. They're different. Thank the goddess. Now that Joy's alive again, you're finally getting to uh, know Sneezy and Dopey as individuals. <laughs> Thank you so much, Oz. You've saved me and all of us. And now we go forth to defeat the literal actual devil, Satan himself, once and for all. Joy has survived death once, which means that after that fake out, the climactic battle is definitely going to go in our favor. Soon, very soon, your parents will be avenged. Thank the goddess indeed. You can also thank her for that plus two smarts and plus one boldness you just got. Yeah! Yeah! It's totally gonna work! It's totally gonna work! It's totally gonna work! Going with myself. All right, here we go. You don't ask anyone to prom, because the truth is, you've been spending a lot more time with the coven lately, and you think you might be feeling stuff for joy. Now you can even remember her name, and isn't that a sign of true love? Oh, they's totally asking you to prom, Joy. Mind your own business, Hope. Remember, we have to retrieve the Sky Tower Emerald next week if we want to have an edge when fighting the Lord of the Flies. That's right. Damn. But remember last season? We had that episode that taught us that it's our responsible leader. You sometimes focus too much on saving the world, and it can end up being a detriment to the whole team if you burn out. Oh, yes. I love that episode. I got a subplot where I befriended what turned out to be the big scary monster's little puppy. You would be okay retrieving the Sky Tower Emerald on your own, girls? Sure, Joy. Remember that other episode that taught you about trusting us and learning to delegate some quests? So we'll do the Emerald thing, and you focus on enjoying prom. The three of them hug, and you hear the audience reacting with a sympathetic, Aww. You have a beautiful evening together, relaxing from too much saving the world. Oh my god, look how cute she is! This is so great. Until that moment when, of course, prom is invaded by an army of skeletons sent by the Lord of the Flies himself. But you have a bonding experience fighting together, performing some kick-ass duo moves, and now... Finally, you can spend the rest of the night totally relaxing from too much saving the world. Yeah! Awesome! Awesome! We defeated the literal devil Satan himself. The literal actual devil Satan himself. And went to prom with joy. That was so cute! Oh my goodness, I'm so happy with that. All right, y'all, well, let's pop to the end screen, but as always, I will end it roughly right around here. Let's read the last couple things, and then we'll be done. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. 
The Monster Hunter kept on harassing Liam and Damien. On one hot summer night, they ended up having the weirdest threesome ever. It was a life-changing experience for all of them, but they don't talk much about it. Scott turned out to be a genius and became the most renowned mathematician in the country. JK, he became an athlete, duh. He's still a bit of a simpleton, but as lovable and good-hearted as ever. Polly's drug cooking skills proved to be useful and she became a chemist for the pharmaceutical industry. Yet, on her free time, she still cooks drugs. Her greatest inventions so far are watermelon-flavored ecstasy and a thing called LS Dope. During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. All right, y'all, with that, thank you so much for watching. My name has been Price, and I will see y'all next time.